to expose the world to more of this part of fashion not the high-end runway like the everyday girl because that's what we are at the end of the day What's up? Welcome to the first episode of I'm Not Rich, I Thrift with Friends. Today I got the lovely, the talented, the amazing Kiara with us. Hi. So basically y'all, today we are just going to do a little bit of thrifting. We bounced into City Thrift right here on Edgewood. We're just going to kind of do some walkthrough. We're going to get into some juicy topics. We're going to shop. What do we call this? Like a thrifting experience? Like a thrifting vibe type of thing. Yeah. yeah. No press. Yeah. <laughs> so when you get to the thrift store, I know for me, when I walk in, I'm going to the men's section first. How do you typically? Oh, well, I usually just go straight for the men's section. I start in the t-shirts if I have the energy because here they have a lot of t-shirts. So okay. I usually go for the men's section. I start with tees, um, denim, um, jackets, or especially this time of year, flannels, jackets, but hats too. So look we about to get the business let me get these glasses yeah. off today's trip is this just like a targeted or you just going with the flow i usually go with the flow i do go to the men's section but i don't set really any expectations most of the time when i go right. i just go in and just see what i kind of stumble upon i usually find that my best friends at the thrift are just me not having any expectations just wanting to find something cool or simply be inspired by something that i see in it. absolutely so if you could tell the people look the people the people that's having a hard time with thrifting mm -hmm. i think that's the biggest thing like stop having these expectations yeah. all this shit oh it's out of season it's somebody else's this is literally yeah. like art it's not it's not like going to h m and everything's like yeah. perfect in the size you know um i think not having expectations like i said is the best way to go about it don't try to look for a particular item just kind of go with whatever your eye catches because that's usually the coolest thing like often when i come in whatever catches my eye is usually the coolest item like even this shirt i have on i think it is here with the flow and another tip too is to wear something cute wear an outfit that makes you feel good even if it's comfortable or it's nice it's a little more dressy or form or whatever just that feel good when you come in here because the energy that you bring into the thrift store usually often helps me find the pieces that i really like i agree yeah that's actually a really good tip mm -hmm. so let's just go and slide to this main section This is cute. We didn't get no basket. So when I be coming to the men's section, I love to go through like the hats mm -hmm. and like you said, the um the jackets because they be having the hardest. Yeah. Not a Donald Trump. She <laughs> 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 got an eye though. I've been wanting a little beret situation. It's like one of my favorite colors. That's cute. That's cute. No, this is this is why I don't come to the thrift store because everything be cute. <laughs> no, this is coming. No, this is a go. 
<laughs> I'll look at it and I'll be like, this is cute, but it's just okay. But that, that's that, coming home. Yeah. So when you already have like a plethora of these kind of hats, what makes you decide this one is coming home today or not? Usually it's the color. It's the color, it's the font. Um, this one is a decent quality. I like the fact that it's embroidered rather than screen printed, so it can last for a long time. It's neutral color, so it can go with a lot of things. So um, just the fact that I can get a lot of wear out of it would be the reason why I would purchase it. But I have multiple I so many black hats. Like, I have so many. So. I don't have no berets. So no, I don't have one either. That's a go. <laughs> Don't sleep on the shoes. I found some really cool bands in here and I'm gonna dye them like different colors. So don't sleep on the men's shoes. I bought Don't like sleep a, on the shoes, y'all. Don't. Some people have like a stigma of wearing other people's shoes. I just put them that? in the washer with, and wash them with some disinfectant and detergent, laundry detergent. I definitely feel like every everybody should have at least what? one black blazer or a navy blue blazer. This one, that's actually really nice. That's really cute. Yeah. But that's the thing. People be sleeping on the men's section because this is where you're going to get all your best blazers from. Yes. Uh, to me, I've found I so many cool ones. Like, I definitely agree. Well, me personally, I've always gravitated towards men's fashion and men's wear more because I do. I, I, I have always been a tomboy. I just now, like, in my 20s started to wear like skirts dresses but i've always loved oversized clothing sneakers and i feel like when i met stuff. you you kind of had a skirt on but you was I wearing did. like an oversized i had a, a, a i had a men's shirt that was yeah. me here that was me <laughs> here like i know that when it comes to street style it is an expression of fashion yeah, can it be too much sometimes to where it goes to a point it looks tacky um Yes, but that's with anything. Too much of anything can look a little tacky or off. Um, I feel like people in those instances where it does look a little tacky, it might be too many, just too much. I don't know. It's, I think it's for me, it's they trying too hard. I think you can definitely tell when somebody might they might be a little try hard with the fit because it'll be a reiteration of something you've seen a thousand times over on the internet or on social media in general. It doesn't look specific to that person's personal style. I agree. So it, it's kind of obvious. Like, I haven't seen that a thousand times. Even if it's I've been seeing that a lot lately. Unfortunately, especially like in Jacksonville, I think they want to embrace like the street culture so bad. It's yeah. like coming off. It's like. It looks like it was thrifty. It looks, it doesn't look polished. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like a good balance of outfits is nothing wrong with mixing, but it shouldn't yeah. all just look like you're just trying. Like, it's just not cohesive. I think people are inspired, but they're not tweaking it. Like, it's okay to be inspired by somebody else, but think it to where you make it your own, not. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna replicate that exact same thing because you have everybody has their favorite color, their favorite pattern. Like in, incorporate those things yeah. into your fit that you were. Inspired. Don't do the mannequin effect where you no. see something on the mannequin and you go boom boom boom. No, because it'll look better if you go off of just your personal taste, uh, yeah. what you think is cool. It'll come out a lot better. So, so that actually jumps into my next question. Yeah. Me personally, being that I have been in the I guess my, you know, people are getting eyes on me. People like to say the word influencer. I do not like that word. How do you feel about the word influencer? And what does that mean to you? The word influencer, um, I don't know what that life's about. I'm not an influencer. I, but that word, I don't think it's necessarily bad. Um, because I see it as a word synonymous to inspiration or a right. person that inspires people. So I don't have a problem with that. I just think it's more so what comes with it. Like when people think of an influencer, they're thinking about somebody showing their matcha or their coffee and going to Target. Like it's, it's very, um, how can I say, 
it's redundant at this it point. Is. So I think that's why people kind of shy away from the word influencer because like I'm not doing. But they're not. Yeah. The people are like I'm a full time influencer, and I guess for me is when I believe in something and when I like it, you can't influence me otherwise. It's gotcha. like that's where I'm at with it. So I think for me being in that limelight now yeah. I don't like when people say oh she's an influencer I've never started this to influence it's just to inspire like yeah. I've been doing this I'm just showing you guys what it is and I hope that it inspires you're yeah, basically saying like you're just doing things you like to do genuinely you're not trying to convince somebody I don't even yeah. the word convince I think it's Maybe that's what it that, that kind of makes people kind of shy away so yeah. I'm not here to convince you like if you, if you identify with it then you do if you don't that's cool to. That's good. So I think moving forward, I just don't like to use the word influencer. And I know that that's like a thing. Mm-hmm. I know that's like the thing now. But I just feel like when you are when you are a real one and you just genuine, people are gonna gravitate to that anyway, and they right. inspire the masses and they'll go with that flow. So when somebody say influence, like I can influence you to, to hit the crack pipe with me. Not, not you. Yeah, but people, <laughs> yes, uh, that are susceptible to being easily influenced. Absolutely. I want to break that though. I, I want people to, you know, when they look at my content, I just want them to be their most authentic self. Right. But use me as the inspiration. Because I feel like. I almost be feeling like future. You know what I'm saying? Like people be trying to keep up, keep up, keep up. But when you real, you just go with your own motion. Like I feel like Kendrick Lamar is one of those people with his music. He just goes with his flow and people catch on. And a lot of people don't rock with it. So I think that's the difference between being an influencer and just someone who is just naturally just genuinely just their authentic self. Or just being themselves. And I think that's what the things that you share that's what that puts out like be yourself do the things you like to do you'll be like i, I like these shoes i like this outfit yeah like, i'll tell you where to wear how to wear it but this is what i would do exactly so i i definitely like that because people don't push that message enough about like this is what i like to do and i want you to do what you like to do yeah i agree it's funny because for some reason when it fall comes, I don't like regular camo no more. I like the wood camo. I don't know. That's just maybe because I'm thinking woodsy fall. Growing so, up in Duval, this is like a love language. Like this is like when you see this, it, it's, it's I just gravitate towards it. So I love tree camo. That's my favorite kind of camo. It goes yeah, with everything. Like it does. Camos. It does. Mm-hmm. For some reason, like this season, I've been straying away from all black. I feel like that's just like a, I feel like all black is like a scapegoat. It is. It's a. It's like it's a easy, cop out. It is. Easy to pull off. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna wear all black. <laughs> this upcoming Friday. No, it's cool to do it. I just feel like when I do all black, that's what I go to. Mm-hmm. The all black is my go-to when I don't have nothing else to wear. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna throw all black. And it's nothing against yeah. people that wear all black all the time. Yeah. You got some people that is their thing. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I just like this season right now. I've been just doing like a lot of beiges and just like muted. I don't know. I'm saying I'm kind of like blah right now on the fashion. I haven't really been like inspired. Nothing has been inspiring me like that. It's like I just been like wearing what's in my closet. Yeah, as you should. Yeah. You should definitely be. What do they say? Shop your closet. You should definitely be going back reading day your closet, especially when the seasons change. I feel like that's a good time to do that because you look out there saying, "Okay, it's getting cool outside." Where's all my jackets, long sleeves, different things like that. So I just love for thrifting again. Oh, to be completely honest, I I have a cousin. Yeah, my cousin Erica, that's like my favorite cousin. Once upon a time, she worked at Plato's Closet. Really? Yeah, she worked at Plato's Closet. So she was telling me about the whole concept. And um, we were supposed to start a brand together. Mm. And 
it just didn't work out that way so I started my first brand it was called Love Doll Shop okay. and I literally just jumped into the idea of thrifting um, at, that po- at that point in time I was specifically thrifting like vintage pieces mm-hmm. because it's something about the uniqueness the quality and then from there I just started just incorporating it into my everyday fashion mm-hmm. so like like me thrifting it's like I mean it's like full circle for me doing this so so to answer the question um my cousin I want to say this started back in like 2010 okay so what is this so we looking at like 14 15 years yeah. of me just like getting into it um I'm not gonna sit up here and hold you and say it was like I was her age doing it mm-hmm. um but definitely you had some years in my early 20s yeah. for sure and like I said, it started off as a resale thing, but it was strictly vintage. Mm. So I would specifically go to like a state sales. Mm. Um, girl, I found one of state sales. It was like a, a fashionista had died. Wow. And when I tell you, her closet was crazy. But it's like she was smaller, you know. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do nothing with it, but it's like I would mm-hmm. find little gems like that, and I just started incorporating it into my everyday style. Mm. So, you know. Um, I like thrifting because it's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> you know, especially, um, I think people get caught up on brands and labels. I think with thrifting, it really puts you in a space where you are exploring your style. Yeah. Because if you can come in here and get fresh, you can come. You can get fresh anywhere. Exactly. People think money equals you have style. Absolutely. It's a lot of influencers yeah. that are out here just buying the whole Louis Vuitton suit and they think they fresh and you really not. You, yeah. look, you look country, actually. <laughs> You look country at the motherfucker. How <laughs> do you feel about over consuming? Because it's very easy to come at the store, the prices are low. How do you feel about over consuming? Because you could just easily come in here and, and rack up a bunch of stuff and never wear it, see it again once you get into your house. I'm so guilty of that. I've but I'm never in it. No, I, I have been guilty of that, but mm-hmm. more lately, it's definitely for me, it's shopping with purpose. Um, it's a matter of. What am I even really here for? Let's yeah. start there. I'm not coming unless I just, it's just like, but then it's almost like confusing because it's like I'm here just going with the flow. Exactly. Um, I think just really locking in and finding those pieces. People, people thrift for different reasons, right? Yeah. You got some people, this is their way of life because they don't have the means. So they come in here and put it together a whole wardrobe. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for me and you, we're fortunate enough to wear this is more so a, not a sport um, but it's more so another option it's for another option for clothing and for our wardrobes right mm-hmm. so when I have that in mind when I'm picking up pieces I want to find things that are truly unique mm-hmm. but then still kind of on trend with what I'm looking for so right. for example this damn hat I've been looking for a beret so for them to have one that just worked out perfect versus me going on H&M spending $30 on one exactly so it's the, I think I stop over consuming by just taking my time and really knowing what I want, really really understanding how I want my wardrobe to look, what I want it to speak and say. Um, and I think that's kind of how I avoid over consuming. Because you can come out of here with a basket full of stuff. Mm-hmm. You see, I threw the hat in there and I said, let me put this hat back because yeah. I know. Because, yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. But, for example, I just thrifted this two weeks ago. I've been wearing it. It get put into play instantly. And it can be paired with a lot of different things. It's a neutral color. I know for me, when I find pieces, I take my time and I'm like, can I wear this three different ways? Can I do this? That's, the, that? that's, the, that's, that's the number. That's something that I've been focusing on because of you. Because you put a, that in your video. Yeah. Like, can you wear it three ways? If you can't, then you might want to reconsider. So now when I shop, I definitely do... Um, ask myself can you do a lot with this if not if you can only wear this one type of way and you can't do too much with it then I just put it back I agree no I agree three times yeah. really more exactly. so look you making me you making me track my own words yeah be able to wear it three different ways then you gonna buy it yup baby go baby One thing that I admire about your style, you have a sick shoe game. Can we get into this? Oh, let's get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, your shoe game is crazy. Oh. So, when it comes to you buying sneakers, 
Oh. How does that work? I have a problem. Okay, with, with sneakers, I've always loved sneakers since a little kid. I've been fortunate enough to have parents that have always kind of supported that love for sneakers. So just growing up around just fly women, my mom, my aunties, and they always had like the Air Max, um, all kinds of Nikes, Reeboks. I've always kind of just seen women be fly. So naturally I wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. And now as a woman, I find myself buying a lot of the same sneakers they had and just kind of having that eye over time of what I really like. I love platforms, but I don't like heels, so I like a platform sneaker. Um, I love a lot of cross trainer sneakers. Um, I love boots. I love my favorite, one of my favorite shoe brands is Dr. Martin's. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I can work with them one day. That's actually something yeah. that I aspire to do. I can see that. What's your favorite pair of sneakers? Top three. Oh, oh, top, number one is the Black Cement 3. Air Jordan 3. That's like my favorite sneaker ever, ever, ever. Number two, it'll probably be my Chrome de Garçon and uh, Nike Cortez because that's just such a unique sick shoe that I'll probably it's wear so forever. That's one of the ones you will keep forever. I, yes. I, I would never. Yes. I would absolutely keep that shoe forever. Third pair that I really like. This is like a recent purchase but this is literally my work sneaker. It's the Air Jordan 1 Lost and Found. Like that's one of my favorite sneakers. Okay. I wear it all the time to work. How do you feel about the insulated prices? I don't like it. Rising? I don't yeah. like it but I I feel like now thrifting is such a trend. Mm -hmm. The thrift stores are hip now. Yeah. It's very funny. Um, I follow a couple of girls. You know, the fashion girlies they thrift, mm -hmm. and she was saying that they be thinking they have all the sense. They'll put like the fake Louis bag on the rack for a hundred dollars, but then she found this crazy owl belt for two ninety nine. Mm -hmm. So it's like y'all trying to be slick, but y'all really don't need to get the value. Mm -hmm. um, these jeans are twelve ninety nine. That's actually a lot. It is. That's a lot. Yeah. But if I was to go buy these from Levi, they're gonna be a hundred fifty dollars. Absolutely, they're gonna be way more. But this is actually a lot for a pair of jeans. Me personally, I don't like it, and it's not for me. It's just for the like you said. This is another clothing option for us. So when people that don't have any other options, this is their main source of how they clothe themselves and their family. Yeah. yeah pay these inflated prices yeah. and I don't think that's fair. Yeah. So I agree with that I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. Yes, I started thrifting in high school like my senior year. I've always liked things and then in my time there was no particular reason for me to start thrifting but I just <laughs> <laughs> I just wish she had a black mom moment. I'm a whole mom out here working. Baby, it's the baby. Baby, it's the, done. Baby. But baby, it's, it's the, the basket being pulled, and I'm pulling it like. Okay. <laughs> started thrifting in high school just because I had a love for vintage things um, in general. So I started thrifting my senior year. I remember people thinking that was dirty. It is. Yeah. Like, thrift stuff. It's nasty. It is. Um, and just not really understanding. So. I, I started because I just thought cool stuff was in the thrift store and just continued on with that and got better with what I was looking for and what I found throughout the years. So, so how many years that put you? Um, I mean, we're trying to expose your age. No, yes, I'm 32. <laughs> next week. I'm very proud that's a privilege to become old. No, for real. Um, I dig it. I dig getting old. Mm -hmm. I dig getting older. You know why? Just the wisdom that come with it. Ooh, you, it's like the knowledge that I have now at 39, mm -hmm. I didn't have at 29. I didn't have at 19. Mm -hmm. So people don't be like, people are, oh, your hair going great. I don't want to hide nothing. Like, this is who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm aging. I'm a mammal. Like, I heard somebody yeah. said it. <laughs> she said, I'm a mammal. And I just think that's just like, it's just like a, a invisible badge. Mm -hmm. It's just come with life. And people should embrace it more. There's beauty in aging. There's peace in aging peace. that you don't have in your previous. Day. I feel like every gray hair is just a badge earned, like you said, an invisible. It's a badge earned, like especially. I see you got some coming. Oh yeah, you six twenty five. Yeah, okay. But as I get further into my thirties, more more coming, and I love it. Yeah. I honestly think it's beautiful, especially on black women, like black people. I I love that we're growing older. We can teach each other things like that. So. I, I love you, Key. I just want to just stop and just say you are just 
your vibe and your aura is just so warm. And I don't even know if you're nervous today, but I'm it's not. just I feel it's very so natural with y'all. And I'm yeah. very awkward and socially <laughs> anxious, but I have not felt that way at all. <laughs> This is cute. This is, I think is this. I'm pretty sure this is vintage. I can tell by the you pattern, so? the tag. It it is. Yeah. And it's Pendleton. Oh yeah, that's a quality skirt. That's Pendleton. I found it. Can see that's what I'm saying. Maybe trying to be so slick. Yeah, this is a true, tried and true. A Pendleton. This actually might come home. This is 100% wool. Yeah. This might come home. Like worn boots or something. This is why it's important to check. Yeah. Make sure when you look over your things, get some lemon juice and baking soda to get oh. that out. Okay. Get that sip. Lemon yeah. juice and baking soda. Let me make sure. It's so what you have to do is also make sure this, even though this can be fixed, mm -hmm. I still like to check the zippers. Yes. But this is on um, This is actually a beautiful skirt. It is. I, I used to be the bodycon dress girl. Oh, I'm so past this now. I'm not gonna lie. I was ne I was never comfortable. Yeah. I. I, I mean, just, it's so funny because it's like I know I have like a shape. Mm -hmm. Um. So I would always just wear stuff, but I've really gotten out of this culture, and I see this a lot. The spandex, the tight, and I do you think that women are afraid to express sexy in a different way and they think this is sexy? Um, I do think that they kind of go more so for most, I would say the majority go for what they see is like the prototype for showing sexy, which is to show out courage. But sexy is expressed in different ways that may not involve you showing your courage or showing your skin. Sexy is an energy. More mm. than it's not really about how you look physically. It's an energy. Because you should be able to wear the body con, wear the big pants, and still be sexy. So. She giving y'all game. Get y'all step y'all sexy up. No key. That's a good find. It's brand new. It's pleated. It doesn't look like it was really worn. Oh, it's new. What the hell? You got tags on it. No, that's actually a steal. And that's the stuff right here. Somebody hold that log up here. This was originally eighty nine fifty reduced to fifty three seventy and it's eleven ninety nine. Fine. This is the best. No, that's a good one. A good, cool little lid. You can wear it with a cool little. I was gonna say you could totally wear it with a boot like that. Get this one. I think me. that's a. I think that's a go. Yeah, I'm gonna get this. The girls and the guys that are not hip to thrifting. Now, granted, we're doing a. That's cute. Let it me see that. Both are colored. Oh, that's cute. What size that is? This. But you see how we're taking our time and going through. It's not like fast fashion. You can't just be like, no, I don't see anything. I have anxiety. I'm stressed out. <laughs> no, just take your time and go with the flow. We ain't got number time and opportunity. You got somewhere to be at? Yeah. You do. <laughs> what are your thoughts on fast fashion? I am not the biggest fan of fast fashion just because of the bigger picture of it all, kind of a bigger picture person. I don't think that it's to sound like one of them, but like I don't think it's good for the environment. I don't think that even just how it's made, it's not made in an ethical way, it's not disposed of in an ethical way. I would prefer people kind of just find other sustainable resources for clothing, but you know, overall I'm not the biggest fan of it. <laughs> <laughs> you too. <laughs> like, it's like girly stuff. I talk about fashion. You don't care. <laughs> I'll let my mama watch you. Okay. <laughs> Y'all be watching YouTube. Yes, I'm playing with me. <laughs> you should. What would you talk about? I would talk about video games. Yeah. <laughs> What's your name? I'm, I'm Johnny. Johnny? Jari. Jari. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. I'm Ashley. But I feel like if that's what you want to do, I think that you should do that. Um, don't never let nobody tell you you can't do something. Even if nobody cares about it, if you love it, you do it, okay? Uh, I don't know if you got, um, but that's my page. It's called Eating Bushy. <laughs> you know, that's the girl that cry. Because it's like, that's you just never know. Yeah. When it comes to handbags, um, 
I know for me, I'm very funny. I like quality for sure. Yeah. Um, I don't mind spending my money on like a designer bag because yeah. I know I'm gonna have it. But then I'm not like a fad shopper. Like yeah. I buy um, classic ones. Like I'm gonna buy YSL. I want to make sure if I'm spending sixteen hundred, I'm gonna get the wear for twenty years, exactly. and it still looks timeless. So, what are yeah. your thoughts on handbags? Um. I do not like carrying handbags. <laughs> I make myself carry a handbag because I just have too much stuff to carry. But I, I share the same sentiment. Get something, like, invest. If you're going to spend the money on something, make sure that you can wear it for years at a time. I've been carrying the same purse for four years. Yeah, I, I, I don't, that. As a person that doesn't like to carry a purse, I was like, okay, I need a purse. And I'm going to get a decent quality one, a classic one that I can just wear with whatever. And, and that's what you're wearing today? Yeah. I mean, it's cute. You did cute. you did your big one with it. Because yeah. it works. And I like that you went with a neutral color. It matches mm-hmm. everything. It, it's a good style because it has the crossbody option. Yep. So I feel like that's a prime example of going for quality over quantity. Yeah. And putting it into your wardrobe to be functional. Yeah. In all aspects. Because you yeah. can do it. What do you think about <laughs> uh, the fake designer? To each his own. If you want to wear fake designer, wear your fake designer. I personally, I don't care for designer, high-end things. So I'm not gone. Um, I just kind of do me. If it just so happens to be that, that's cool. But if it's fake, it's if that works for you, it works for you. I feel that. Yeah. I do, but I don't. Um, but I'm starting to have a shift in that. Mm. Because I think, I feel like this world that we live in, they put just a high dollar. Like, I can go and make a ring, and I say, this is designer. You're going to pay a $1,000 for it. What makes this ring any better than the other ring? Exactly. So, I'm really just starting to wonder... Now, I personally don't own any dupes. I don't. If I get it, it is authentic. But I have a shift in my mindset. Like, what difference does it really make if the Chanel came from the factory? or Because they don't care about... Mm-hmm. They don't care about none of us. And it's the young lady that does this. Everything is dupes. Mm-hmm. I really want to ask her, like, what is the thought process? Because she throws... And it'd be nice. Mm-hmm. But it's like, does it matter? To this me... This so fake. Do it really matter? Yeah, to me... Do it matter? <laughs> you see, I mean, we've been dirty. trying to think it do. But right. what, what will be the difference if somebody was coming down the street with their Chanel and mine and they look exactly the same? For me, I'm I I know it's the real one. Yeah. Mine, I think, but but what if we let go of that persona that mm. it has more value because you bought it from the store versus it's the same bag? Yeah, I think the value needs to be shifted in the quality part. Like, if the dupe is a better quality, go with the dupe. <laughs> if if the, the real Chanel is better quality, go with that one if that's what you want. So, for me, it's about quality. So, if that bag, if that dupe fall apart, then it really wasn't no point of you spending whatever you spent because it's not going to last. Yeah. Um, the real one, if that lasts, because I know a lot of Chanel's are considered investment pieces or, like, people buy Chanel's. But what are we investing in if we keep it? Is it real estate? Some people view it that way. Like, I can flip this. I can sell this. I can resell this Chanel. Uh, That's true. And some people just get it for the trend because they see all the other girls with the Chanel. The influencers. <laughs> yeah. The, the influencers <laughs> could have influenced them to get a Chanel bag. But they don't really know what they're buying. They don't know the history. Do they know who Coco Chanel is? Do they know what she did? Not to, like, say, but do your research. That's the thing, too, with me. Before I buy sneakers, before I buy really anything for real, I do research on it. Yeah. You need to know what you're buying. I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, I think it's just the whole world. It's just all fake. Everything just be so just... Definitely an illusion. It's why it's important to stay true to yourself because all of this is just an illusion. And, you know, and if you don't know yourself, then it's very easy for you to subscribe to whatever you're being said or whatever's being put in front of you. I agree. Yeah. Just for the record, none of my shit ain't fake, just so y'all know. But I'm just saying, I'm just having a different thought process. That's it. <laughs> And I'm not 
not gonna get this jacket. Like the more I'm thinking about it, it's like that's why it's important. That, that's something else I do too. I like to sit with things. And yeah, like, to the store to see if I truly want that item or not. Yeah, I'll sit on it because sometimes it's a matter of. I think if this was like a vintage piece, I probably would do it. But this yeah. is something I know I could find anywhere, like in better condition. How important is it for you, for your partner, to be able to dress? Definitely, with like a man with a sense of style for sure. Um, he doesn't have to like match me or anything like that, but he's tapped into his personal style and it works for him. He do he does too, you know. So you would be okay with somebody who can't dress, like can't dress. If you can't, to me, you can't dress is like you not t you not connected to yourself in that way of of self expression. Um, if you're a man that I feel like is connected with himself to where you can express yourself in many ways, especially through your clothes outwardly, then I find that attractive. But if you can't, then that I'm I'm not gonna say it's a deal breaker, but I'm not as attractive. Yeah, like I'll say that. So essentially, the way your aura is set up, you're gonna attract somebody that had that going on anyway. They're gonna be confident. Type with shit. Yeah. yeah. Somebody, ah, you go. Know. <laughs> I just went on a date with somebody earlier this year. I'm not gonna say where we went, mm -hmm. but it was a very upscale event, mm -hmm. and he came in a full polo outfit from head to toe and I had on a blazer and slack so I think yeah. for me knowing how to dress don't embarrass me don't come in here looking like we finna go to the cookout but we at a we're at a yeah uh, upscale event yeah you know what I'm saying like that yeah. that is important to me Same. yeah I and I mean and I don't want to be in a situation where I'm having to teach you what to wear either. I'm not doing that I can't do I can't I don't want to I'm not doing that like you you either got it or you don't <laughs> um and that's okay if you you don't. It's just I don't know if it's okay. No, it's un, like read the room. Like, do you? But okay, it's a formal event. Do you? But don't come with the whole polo. I mean, baby had on the plaid polo, khaki pants, sneakers, the polo hat. He probably thought that was he was dressed up. That's probably formal. For him. Yeah. This is probably like the second day I knew it wasn't gonna work. He might be watching this move. <laughs> God. You know, but um, for the most part, any man that has approached me or that I've given any time to, they've all had, they've, all been, they've always been stylish. But you, so. you attracted that. Yeah. I do believe you are what you attract. Absolutely. But sometimes I be attracted like, who's sick? At this point, we just going through what we picked up. It's a very important part of thrifting. Go through your choices to see what you really want. I don't want to spend thirteen dollars on these. I can be cheap too. No, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, it's like I splurge on what I want. Yeah. These are so okay. These are gonna not come with me today. And I'm definitely gonna keep my leg of skirt. And I'm gonna okay. wear it with these boots. Definitely. definitely. That is definitely a go. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this class skirt today. And I'm gonna do. As you can see, thrifting isn't always about just buying in bulk. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. just taking your time and finding quality pieces. Yep. Let's check out. All right. <laughs> Is there anything that you want to give the folks before we check out and leave for the day? Yeah, just something simple. Explore your personal style. Shop. Be Shop responsibly. Whether that's sustainable, whether you're not over consuming, just be more intentional about what you're putting on your body because it does say a lot. It does. It does. I mean, at this point, as far as I go, y'all know why we here. Like, this is what I'm here for. I'm here to expose people like this to you because I feel like this needs to be shown more. Um, I just, I love this chick. It's like, it's just always just been so genuine. Um, 
and I just want I just want to expose the world to more of this part of fashion not the high-end runway like the everyday girl because that's what we are at the end of the day absolutely why am I looking at the camera talking to you <laughs> <laughs> I want y'all to feel yeah. me like this is what I do this for yeah. so just thank you for even taking your time today you that's know it. thank you for the wow. knowledge yeah. we'll be linking up again <laughs> you already know and that's a wrap. Okay. Bye.